What's going on guys? John Elder here from Codemy.com and in this video, I want to show you how to do drop down boxes with Kinter and Python. All right, in the last video, we looked at check boxes. In this video, I want to look at drop down boxes. But before we get started, if you like this video, and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube to get $22 off membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books for a one-time fee of just $27, which is insanely cheap. All right, drop down boxes. What am I talking about? Well, think of like a web form where you click the little drop down box, box opens, there's a menu you can select from, you pick the thing and that's that. Well, basically the same thing, but with Kinter. So a drop down box is basically something called an options menu, an option menu, singular. So to do that, let's go create a variable. And this acts an awful lot like the check boxes we looked at in the last video. So there's a lot of things that are similar. So you'll notice that. So it's just option. Uh, we need to set this equal to option menu. And we want this in root. And just like with the check boxes, we need to assign a variable to this so that, you know, whatever we check in the boxes, whichever box we select, which, whichever item in the box we select, that will be assigned to a variable. And we could call it var if we want or we can call it clicked, whatever you want. And that's that. So now inside of here, the next thing is to sort of designate the items in the menu. So we could go Monday, Tuesday, uh, and you just separate these with commas, uh, Thursday, and the most important day, Friday, right? So now we just drop dot pack onto the screen. Now we've created this clicked variable. We need to actually define this because just like with the check boxes, this is a Kinter variable. So it's a little different. You set it and get it and you define whether it's a string variable or an integer variable. In this case, our menu items are strings. So we're going to use a string variable. So we just call clicked equals string var. And that's it. All right, so this will work. And I should mention, I just used the same starter code we've been using, and I'm saving this as dropdown.py. So this will work, but it won't show a default value as you'll see here. Let's just run this and see. So right off the bat, pull this over. You can see here's our menu, but there's no default items. But if you click on it and then select an item, it'll update, but that's not great. We need a, an actual default item. So how do we do that? Well, it's pretty simple. You know, we've played with these uh, variables these Kinter variables before, and we can get and set. So in this case, we want to set, and then we just pick which one we want to set. So let's just call Monday here. So if we save this, come back here and run it. Now, pull this over, boom, it says Monday right at the beginning. Very cool, right? So, okay, so how, how do we get the selection and use it to do stuff with? Well, just like the check boxes in the last video, we can just access this clicked variable. So let's create a button, my button, and that's a button and it's in root. And we want the text to say, show selection. And let's give this a command equals show, just like we did in the last video. And then up here at the top, we can define show. And then let's go my label equals label. And we want this in root and we want the text to equal. Now we're going to want this clicked, not in quotation marks, clicked dot get. Right. And then we want to pack this on the screen. Down here, our button, we need to pack that one too. I don't always forget that. Okay. So if we save this, this should work, I think. Okay, so show selection, boom, Monday, uh, Thursday, boom, 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 Friday, boom. Okay, so that's how you do that. Now, once you've done that, obviously, you can do anything you want with it, right? One little thing I do want to show you, look down here. Here, we're sort of designating what options we want to show up in the menu, what items we want to show up in the menu. And that's okay, it works, but like you might have 100 things in your, your drop down that you want. And this is already starting to get unruly. So instead of doing it like this, we can actually just use a um, 
Python list. So let's create a list, let's call it options. And it's just a, a regular Python list, right? And I'm just gonna print in and paste in these items. So here, you know, I'm gonna put these one on each line because that's what we like to do with lists. It makes it easier to read. So here we can, instead of putting all of these guys in here, we can just pass in this list options. Now, one thing we have to do that's a little different, not really intuitive, you need to put a star in front of it. So, all right, here, this looks good. Now here, when we set this, we set it equal to Monday. We could now, if we wanted to get really fancy, set this equal to options and then just pick an item, right? We want the zeroth item in our list. It's just a Python list, so the zeroth item is Monday. So we'll just pass it in like that. It's a little, little nicer way to do that. So sort of eyeball on this, everything looks good. So if we save this, come back here and run it again, it works the same exact way, right? It's just now it's been created as a list. Why would you want to do this? Well, it's just easier. So like later on, if we wanted to add Saturday, right? Boom, we just do it like that. It's easy. You just go right to the list. It's easier to read. It's easier to edit in the future and then everything just works. So if we save this and run it just to make sure, we get, boom, Saturday is there, Saturday. So pretty simple, pretty straightforward. This is very similar, like I said, to the check boxes. We're using the same hinter variables in the same sort of way, and we're showing them in the same sort of way with the show function that we created and the click dot get. Uh, this is a little different because this time we're also setting it to begin with. So that's kind of fun. And that's pretty much all there is to it. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube to get $22 off membership. So you pay just $27 to access all my courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 50,000 students learning to code. My name is John Elder from codemy.com. We'll see you in the next video.